these inflows of gold into China and wonder what the Chinese strategy is here. Right. And you have a unique perspective on this. What are they doing? You know, the Chinese think long term, right? They have these long term plans. They're very, you know, they're Western educated. They're actually really intelligent at the, the high levels of leadership, uh, particularly on the financial side. And quietly, since 2013, China's become the world's largest gold market. You say, well, why is that? Well, it's interesting. What's been happening is the PBOC has been buying massive amounts of gold because I believe that they are moving toward a partial backing of the renminbi. What the Chinese want is for the renminbi to be A, then the, that's longer term, but world, world reserve currency. You know, they want to be part of the SDR. They want to be ultimately a currency that central banks and countries buy, just like the yen or the euro or the dollar. And so that's their long-term goal. So everyone's worried about a devaluation of the currency. And I think they're going the other way. I think they're backing it with gold, partially, not fully, about a third. They are then going to keep it very stable so that people at central banks say, well, yeah, I would want to own some of that. I want to diversify my dollar risk or my euro, which has been very volatile, or my yen, which you don't know what it's going to do week to week. Mm -hmm. And so if they can achieve that, then having this gold behind it gives people an even greater feeling of safety. And what's interesting that I think is probably the biggest development that people aren't talking about is on April 24th, the Chinese um, uh, mercantile exchange now will price gold in renminbi. That is a huge development, monster development. How is the order managing the conflict we see on the globe today? Well, it's, as I mentioned before, basically it is using the Hegelian dialectic. You establish one side, then you establish the other side, then you bring them into conflict, then you manage that conflict. So you establish Soviet Union, you establish Hitler, you bring them into conflict, World War II. By managing the conflict, you can control the next decade or so. And as I mentioned, um, we built up the Soviet Union. We're building up the China today, communist China. We're even going to send the military technology. So by 1990-2000, we've established the two sides. We bring them into conflict. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, please like and subscribe. If you do like what you're listening to, please inform your friends and family and spread it on social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that everything is planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the book, Crypto Teacher and W.O. Book. Also, those who donate to the Cash App Patreon. Much love. Keep it coming. Now, guys, of course, we're going to get into Bitcoin first and cryptos. We know it's the weekend, guys. We know retail investors come in because what? Stock market is closed. So, of course, what happens? A lot of these trades are, of course, dark trading where it does not move the market a whole lot, but it will maintain us. So uh, basically right now, Bitcoin has been steady in consolidation. The only reason why we did drop is because of Bach. Of course, that is over now. So the fact is that make sure you're sticking with the fundamentals. Stable coins, 99 and below. You know that basically we're going to stay steady or go up. If it's above the dollar, that means that we're going down. So make sure you stay focused on the stable coins and the volume. And remember, XRP is an indicator. X star, and when XRP starts going in that positive, the rest of the market goes in the positive. So make sure that you're staying focused on the indicators. Now, guys, getting over into the videos. This is very important. Just like I said, I've done plenty of videos on China. If you're new to my channel, please go back and watch my China videos and also have it in my must-watch videos. Uh, basically, Anthony Sutton is so important in my life. Basically, his books, he already told us what was going to happen before it happened. Of course, he was around for a little while as a professor, and then he just disappeared all of a sudden. So, uh, But guys, we know why, because of the things he was talking about. But getting into the videos, guys. So basically, we have China, uh, Yuan, digital currency. Of course, it is going to be go back. Now, basically, we have to start from the beginning. Now, don't forget that China had a silver back currency. And basically, that was uh, they got rid of that in 1935. So it hasn't been that long since they had a, you know, a back currency. Now, when China joined uh, the IMF basket of currencies, we all knew that 
the China Empire was going to rise to the top. Anybody who understands history, I have this in my book. So the fact is that if you have my book, I've already explained to you what's going to happen. But the fact is, is that basically once they did that, I think this was in 2016, basically that was the, the signal to put their foot on the gas as far as with rising China up. Now, like I stated, make sure you go and study the Belt and Road with China. Don't forget that when China went into Africa, they got reclassified as indigenous people, as Africans. So when China went to Africa to get all that gold, they got themselves reclassified as Africans. So guys, I just want to make sure you understand how deep this actually goes. But the fact is, is that basically the United States and the same banks built up China. Now you got to remember doing, you know, the heroin, uh, the heroin trade and all that with England. I'm not going to get into that, Queen England. But the fact is that I do get into that in my book. But the fact is that basically you had the same banks, J.P. Morgan, Lehman Brothers, Citibank. And I don't know whether anybody noticed or not, but Lehman Brothers was still trading after all that happened. They still were trading for years on the OTC market. That's just a fun fact. But, uh, guys, getting back to it. But the fact is that basically you had the same banks that invested in China. Now, don't forget... Every ever since Reagan, every president has built up China. Every president in some way, form, or fashion. Now, of course, Reagan did it in a big way. Bill Clinton did it in a big way. But the fact is that every president has made some type of way, whether it was technology, whether it was militarily, whether it was money, Manufacture. Remember, uh, Bill Clinton sent all the manufacturing jobs over into China. And I'm talking about all of them. So that's how they were able to get themselves, you know, running. So, and then uh, also we had uh, Reagan giving all the technology, military, and then also um, with China Gate with Bill Clinton, he got busted giving the Chinese the military. So, guys, they were doing nothing but building this up. And how do we know this? Because we know this through Anthony Sutton. His work, the professor that did the hard work. We always have to go back to our elders and thank them for the hard work that they did. So therefore, we understand as the next generation. Of course, that's the reason why I wrote my book. So the generation behind me can read this and go, okay, let me do my research and see the next step that they're moving. So guys, remember, every revolution started from reading a book. So don't forget about that. But the fact is that basically China is being built by the same banks that's been around forever, that built the, the you know the Federal Reserve, all these central banks so they could take over the globe, has built China. So we just have to make sure that we understand the plan so therefore we can beat them to the punch and make the money off of it, make sure that our families are secure and taken care of. Now, uh, the fact is that basically you also have um, Stellar, of course, um, XLM, Jeb, they're over in Africa. You have Ripple over in Africa. And then also they have ties, SBI and all that with Ripple and Stellar. Same thing with China. So, and then we had Brad Garlinghouse come out and say, you know, China's leading the, uh, the crypto regulation. But guys, think about it. We had President Trump sign Executive Order 13772 about the fintech banks. We know these big corporations are already trying to get over into China. We had American Express just get approval in China. We just had JP Morgan just get approval in China. These same banks, guys. The same banks. So we're supposed to be enemies with China, but they're slowly seeping their way in. All the corporations are over in China. So we know that majority of our American corporations are either in blockchain or in crypto. So it's not like the president doesn't know. And just like I say, he speaks nothing about crypto. He speaks nothing about blockchain because that's for a reason. That is for a reason. That's just to sell out America, guys. Every president has done that. You have to remember that every president is controlled. Plain and simple. They're all related through bloodline. I've been over that several times. The end game, guys, is to bring America to its knees. 
plain and simple. And don't forget, we have the depopulation agenda. All that is in play. But the fact is that basically we have so much technology that they're going to move into the United States to make just about everything free of charge. And that's when you have socialism. And you have socialism for five years before you can take total control. So basically that's where the new world order comes to play. Just like I said, we're in the new world order. We are in the new world order, guys. It's not, it's not going to happen in 10 years, 15 years. We're in the New World Order. And if you can't see that, something is definitely wrong. But yes, China is going to have the world reserve currency. Remember all those countries that are inside of Belt and Road and what country is left out? The United States. You got that right. All the rest of the countries are in. But the fact is that basically, guys, getting over to regular crypto news, uh, basically we have uh, the Pentagon trying to regulate and spy on uh, crypto transactions and it's like I said guys we're solely seeing this and like I stated in the Twitter hacking all this is done on purpose to bring in uh, so therefore they can close all the loopholes when they do turn the switch on so therefore everything is tracked and don't forget about that guys crypto is nothing but control in the right hands that we can go peer to peer it's the greatest thing in the world. But unfortunately, that's not the way this is headed. And then also, guys, we have uh, Cosmos, Fusion, Polkadot. Of course, basically, those are three great uh, DeFi projects. Lastly, guys, we have, of course, the Cloud uh, Flare outage. Guys, we know everything is planned out. So whatever they was doing, we just got to do our research. I'm going to stay up on it. But whatever they were doing, they were doing something. So... Uh, guys, when, when you have outages like that, it's not for any reason. Same way when you see all cell phone, I, it's different with this one company, but all the cell phones go out, that's when you know something's not right. Same thing with, with Cloud uh, Flare. But guys, that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books, Crypto Teacher and W.O. book. If you're new to cryptos, don't forget about Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance, the link's at the bottom. Also, my books are at the, the uh, description is at the bottom. Also, guys, don't forget about the stocks. You have your cobalt, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming stocks. Also, because everybody's sitting at home, don't forget about those stocks. You also have the C word, of course, the biotech stocks. Don't forget about those. Also, because everybody's sitting at home getting that free money for right now. Don't forget about what are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks. And y'all have a wonderful day.